Thank you. And now we are going to introduce to you uh, Liz Story. And I'm so excited that she is here with us. Thank you very much. So um, I uh, really wanted to become a better sight reader, thinking I could do studio work, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so the key with you know sight reading is that you know you start to play and you don't stop, even if you screw up a note, you keep moving. And I was not good. At, I'm still not good at it. And I mean, I'll stop and go. Ah, let me let me learn this piece first, and then I'll sight read it. <laughs> um, so one day on the way home from school, I thought, you know, if I got a gig at you know like a restaurant or something like that, you know, in the background, nobody's really actually nobody really pays attention unless you screw up, you know. Then, Anyway, um, I thought I could learn how to sight read. So I had stopped at all these different restaurants, and uh, most of them wanted me to be able to do requests, which uh, I couldn't do. So I thought, oh, well. It was about two months later, this restaurant calls up and says, you know, to come over. And I'm like, oh, my God. And I put all this, I had a stack of music, and I go, okay, I'm going to do this and do this. And when I... Uh, uh, arrived at the restaurant and walked back. It was actually kind of a narrow, dark, um, you know, darkly lit. Uh, darkly lit? That's a, it's usually, that's kind of an oxymoron, right? Okay. Um, and I went back, and the piano that they had was an old upright, and the entire front casing of the piano was missing. That's like, here's the key, here's the hammer. There is nowhere to put music, okay? And I started to absolutely freak out and, uh, you know, really went into a state of panic and uh, thinking, oh, I can put music on the floor? No, it's too dark. I can't really, what can I do? And then the manager of the restaurant came up and said, um, uh, you know, start playing, and I don't want any applause, meaning don't play really loud. I said, uh, I was actually too panic-stricken to say, I can't do this, you know. So basically, I sat down and started to pretend to play the piano. And uh, uh, that's where I think my weird phrasing comes from, some people say, you know. Like, if you were to pretend you were speaking, I don't know, another language, Japanese, I don't know. Anyway, that's my phrasing, okay? This is really weird. Am I really doing this? <laughs> It's his fault. Um, I never actually wanted anybody to know this story until one time uh, I did a clinic and it was for students that were in trouble and I was, you know, playing this show to raise money for their uh, concert piano and they asked me to do this and I thought, okay, yeah, sure. And there were all these uh, teenagers that, you know, were kind of not in school out of it. And I thought, you know what, I really want them to know how maybe panic can be useful, and I didn't have a clue. Guess what? Hello? Anyway, so now I'm telling the story all the time because <laughs> everybody laughed, thought it was so funny. So I knew I liked the sound of an F minor 9 chord, so I played it down here, then I played it in the middle, and then I played it at the top, and about that time it was like, Ugh. I mean, that's the one thing about music. It's in time, so, you know, I have to keep moving. So this piece is called... And this actually got a, me a, uh, a record deal. And P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, uh, actually sampled it. Anyway, one of those outrageous things that happened. Uh, so panic can be useful. And uh, it's called uh, Bradley's Dream because Bradley was one of the waiters at the um, restaurant. And that's a whole other story. We'll leave that. <laughs>
um, I had this um, studio space on top of this mountain um, in northern Arizona. One of the nice things about Arizona is that okay. it, um, uh. it's dry enough, especially up there, that um, you don't have too many insects. That's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, I had this uh, uh, space where my piano was, and I, I didn't really even have too much electricity. I mean, I didn't have a refrigerator. I didn't have any of that, you know, stuff that where you, you don't realize how much there's a, uh, a sound. Um, and so there was this one day, and I'm, I'm working in this, there was this fly that, of course, ended up sounding incredibly loud, you know, flying around, and I'm going, where? I was trying to get the fly, get it out of there. I couldn't get it. Uh, and I, then I just finally decided to... Um, go over to the piano and figure out what note it was buzzing at. <laughs> F. And it's actually amazing uh, what kind of things happen in F. Uh, I'm now, uh, actually that's not quite the same, I'm just suddenly flashing on the fact that I've been taking care of my parents who are 91 and 90 and um, they live on this dead end street and uh, across the street is this uh, well, this rooster showed up, and uh, it just kept going around all the houses, and so right across from my parents is this uh, child care place, and they're the ones that actually ended up giving the rooster a home. They even have chickens now, but they have these kids, and the amazing thing about the rooster is that it'll actually be quiet when the kids are taking a nap. That's kind of cool. Anyway, but I sit out there because my parents' garage, and because of the situation, I have this little keyboard uh, thing that I put out in the garage because he likes to sit outside and I um, listen to the rooster and so I finally decide what is he you know and here it is I, I think we both have all uh, humans also have two vocal cords but they're very resonant well the rooster you know I'm going no what? I, you know, and the thing that's funny, it's the same with trying to figure out a bird. You have to wait till they do it again to check it out, you know. And this rooster was completely annoying at times. It would do it twice and then wouldn't do it for like 20 minutes. And I'm like, okay. And anyway, I finally realized that it was, uh, the top note was always a, there it is. And when I did that, finally my sister went, oh my God, that's it. So then, I, I can't believe I just went off on that. It has to do with that fly. So I was very thrilled, however, when um, I realized uh, that the fly was an F, uh, that it was singing an F. And by the way, when I've told this story before, I think it's hilarious that always ho horn players will always come up to me later and go, I know what you mean. Because, I mean, they'll be playing outside, you know. They can take their instrument outside. Um, so I, what amused me on a very profound level, though, was... Uh, um, that I had written a piece called Things with Wings in the key of F. Here it is. <laughs> I mean, I had already done that. Maybe it was a fly. Another hyperdimensional portal.
Okay, I, I'm gonna say something that weird, but um, <laughs> I'm a Steinway artist, and uh, when I did a thing for um, Yamaha Disc Clavier, which is really not, you know, it's a fiber optic, blah, 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 I actually got kind of in trouble, so I'm going like this. No, this is being filmed. Ah, I'm not playing a Yamaha, okay? I'm gonna, cause somebody, does somebody have any tape? <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, I'll use that as an excuse for any mistakes I'm making. <laughs> Um, I'm going to end with a piece that, uh, because of the whole phrasing, timing, everything, there was a, um, and the way that I started writing, I actually, uh, at the point at which I thought I would want to write music, I thought, <clears throat> if I just knew every scale from every degree of every other scale, I could improvise. It's sort of like, let me have the dictionary, I'll learn every word, then I might be able to speak the language kind of thinking. Um, Obsessive compulsive, what they call it? Yeah, okay. Anyway, um, but as a result, whatever language I did have and the way that I started writing, you know, it was like about uh, after my fifth um, CD, I thought, I have, I want this other language that I, you know, all these um, altered chords and everything. And so I ended up doing a, a CD of standards. And uh, <clears throat> I thought also that if I was going to have one other instrument too, and uh, that it would be bass. And I ended up hooking up with uh, Joel DeBartolo, the bass player for the Tonight Show band for 17 years, and a pretty incredible bass player. And uh, the first thing I said to him when I met him was, I just want you to know that I know that I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> And uh, <clears throat> one of the things was, um, which is why I didn't want a drummer, <laughs> is that I don't really play in time. I mean, it might sound like it at times, but I don't really play in time. And I said to him, you know, I, I don't really play in time. I know that. And he goes, no, no. And this is probably the hugest gift I've received ever from any musician, especially somebody like that at that level. I said, no, you play in time. You play in your own time, but you play in time. <laughs> so this is a tune that I wrote and dedicated to Joel. It's called Out of Time. I mean, it, that title always sounds like I'm out of time. No, no. Well, I could say I'm out of time, but, but it's okay. <laughs> Not in time.
I don't, I don't have a question. I just want to compliment you three on the emotion that was projected in the songs that you all developed. I really appreciate it. You are the most inspiring three women that I have had the great honor to hear this evening. I am just really overwhelmed with it and... Um, uh, this, I know you've had struggles, big struggles, because you're so talented, and the rest of life would have to come down and put burdens on you that made it difficult to get to where you are now. And uh, I just think you've done a magnificent job. Um, shows me some things I might have been able to do if I'd had the drive that you've had. And... Um, uh, I'm just really taken with it. But my question is, have you um, a special uh, performance that you've given for anyone special, any special place or special person that that was a real thrill for you? Other than Mission Viejo, of course. Yeah. <laughs> well, you took my answer. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's funny because I was just on a, um, a spirituality retreat, a women's spirituality retreat last weekend, and I had, I travel with my keyboard, so I've got like a full-size keyboard, electronic keyboard, and I brought it to retreat, which I don't usually do because, you know, I want to be focused and paying attention to what's going on, what the facilitator is doing, but I had this keyboard, and they asked me to play like the last night when we broke silence and stuff. And so there I am, no makeup, hair a mess, in slippers and pajamas, and I'm playing for these women, and I'm thinking, wow, that's what it's been, you know, because I, I, what, what I want it to be, what I want the music to be is, a, is coming from a vulnerable place, an honest place, and not just like a show. And there I was, you know, and these women love this music, and I was able to, I was able to do that then, and so that's my... That's my most special performance. Uh, I think the most uh, poignant uh, performance I've had was just kind of a, a few years ago, actually, in Dana Point, uh, where I was involved with a, um, it's called Toshida Heaven, and they're not there anymore, but they moved to New York. But the, the thing was is that it was very intimate, like this, and... It was all voluntary. So um, I remember playing a song that I hadn't played before, and it, it, I hadn't named it either. And I, I asked afterwards, what would you name this? And I had a place in mind, and I didn't even tell anybody about it, and they said Big Sur. And it's one of my favorite places to be. And it just it touched me that they could feel what I was projecting in the music and yeah, it made me cry. I'm, I'm a big baby. Um, everything makes me cry. And so, um, that, that piece was really cool. And the people that, <clears throat> excuse me, that showed up was just, it was incredible. It was incredible energy. Like I can feel from all of you and I appreciate the opportunity to be able to do this. Uh, because of how my uh, musical, you know, performances started, I just was so, I just didn't want to screw up, you know. I wasn't even thinking about, uh, I have uh, two, uh, one of the things that's very interesting about um, people, because being on Wyndham Hill, we would always go out on different shows or what I, and go out into the audience, uh, out, you know, and, uh, where the CDs would be sold and sign CDs. So I ended up being able to talk to a lot of people. And one of the things that was always very moving, because when I'm playing, I'm just, you know, I actually sort of think of myself as, uh, uh, I am not the one, uh, this is hard to explain. It's sort of like the music comes 
uh, through, I need to have the skill to play it. So I have to learn this passage. All right, you know, in other words, to be able to physically do it, uh, accomplish it. And then when it's being played, because a lot of times it shifts, you know, you play the tune this way, this time, this way, that time, and uh, depending on the piano too. <laughs> and, uh, but the thing that always used to make me uh, amazed is that even when, let's say I'm writing a tune and I have this feeling about it, it'll change. And then somebody will come up to me and, oh, that tune really makes me uh, laugh. And I'm going, oh my God, I wrote it in complete grief. Okay, really? You know, <laughs> Uh, and that kind of stuff is pretty amazing. The only thing, the when you were when you were talking about performances and stuff, what I started to flash on though was way back. This is sort of off the subject, but it's an extremely funny story. You guys will appreciate this. Have you ever played an Imperial Bosendorfer? No. Okay, that is you know eighty eight keys. It has another octave almost. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, this one, I didn't even know about it. And this was the Montreux Jazz Festival, okay? And I did not have a sound check, okay? And it wasn't one of those that it has a cover or reverse, you know, these are black and these are white. No. So I didn't know. And I sat down and started to play. Well, I started playing an octave lower. And then I think there's something wrong with the sound system. And then I'm going, what? I mean, it was like an extreme nightmare until I finally realized, what? Okay. Anyway, that's my... I don't know. That, does that answer your question? 